One step forward and two steps back. One step forward and two steps back. One step forward. You are Locked On Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And two steps back. What's up, Wolfpack Nation? It's time to get locked in with Locked On. Thanks for making Locked On Wolfpack your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can join today and get $200 back in bonus bets if your first bet of five or more dollars wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Happy Thursday to all. As always, I'm Grayson Boone, joined by former Wolfpack defensive tackle Kenton Gibbs. Kenton, it's one step forward and two steps back. That is the story of NC State men's basketball lately. It's been the story the last couple years. And tonight was just kind of a microcosm of that. You hosted Pittsburgh, a quad two opportunity, the third game of a three-game homestand. I mean, no other way to say it other than you absolutely had to win this game and they gave it away. The Wolfpack Nation, and I'm going to touch your shoulder when I say this because I, I'm saying this from the heart. This is who this team is. Yes. Let's accept it. Let's move forward from that, right? Because there's a lot of – it's it's harder when you refuse to accept the team being me. Everybody's talking about the attendance tonight and how empty the PNC was. I'm not. I'm not surprised. Not surprised because people are accepting what this team is. And the sooner you do, the sooner you stop doing every game we win is like, oh, we're going to be in a tournament. And every game we lose is like, oh, God, we're we are a bubble team that's firmly on the outside. Grace and I have said on this show multiple times. The tournament hopes are hanging on by a thread. The tournament hopes are barely alive. The tournament hopes, of course, any direction sends winning the, the conference tournament. They're just barely. And tonight, it was taken off life support. It was It's firmly in that situation now where even if you did win out, even if you did win out with this schedule that we have in front of us, that it, it would allow for multiple very good opportunities. I still don't know if that'd be enough. I still... I'm not a thousand percent sure that that'd be enough to get you in the tournament. If they were to win out, I think there is enough quad one opportunities that it would put them in. The problem with that is, is we have not been instilled with any confidence that that is potentially uh, an option. You have eight games left in the regular season. Five of those are on the road. I think four of them are quad one. One of them is quad two. That is some steep uphill battling you'd have to do to, again, really even give yourself a shot. We are firmly off of the bubble on the wrong side of it. And a loss tonight against Pittsburgh, it twists the knife a little bit slower. I think when you're looking at the doomsday clock for this season, it's, you know, it's right back at 1159 and probably 58 seconds and not trying to be all doom and gloom here, but I mean, this is, this is the reality that we are faced with. So in reviewing this loss against Pittsburgh, the 67 to 64 loss at home, I think the easiest way to go about this, as we often do, is the good, the bad, and the ugly. So, Kenton, I'll kick it to you first. Give me your good from this game on Wednesday night. The DJs, right? The the two DJs showed up big time. DJ Burns, I have not seen DJ Burns look this effective at any point in time this season. And, And please correct me if I'm wrong there. But with that being said, you then look at DJ Horn also having a great night. And it's like, okay. This is good. This is good. I've, and I definitely haven't seen these two both be good at the same time in conference play. So that's my good for the night. Our DJs showed up. And, yes, the our DJs are playing all the hits tonight. That dad joke was me. That was me. I was not Grayson. You know, I don't want Grayson's uh, street cred taking the hit for that one because that was me. <laughs> that, well, they were playing the hits until they weren't playing the hits. I mean, 
all in all, I, I mirror your sentiment here. The, the good was the two DJs. I think DJ Burns really came out early and was aggressive, and I really appreciated that from him. Is He's been going through it lately. He's receiving a lot of scrutiny. A lot of that is warranted. But I thought overall he played a very good game tonight, all things considered. I think he missed a couple bunnies that did hurt. But I'll take a pretty efficient night of 19 points from DJ Burns at any given time. I'll take that. Every single time. And so look at DJ Horn, of course, he remains our best player. And that there's sure. no confusion about that. He had another great night of shooting, finished with 25, 50% from three-point land, really our only threat from the perimeter consistently, at least. I'm not sure that DJ Horn is getting enough love for doing or for the backpacking job that he is doing for this team right now. He is what feels like single-handedly keeping them from completely flatlining. And so, I mean, credit DJ Horn, but a segue into the bad here, DJ Horn cannot do it alone. And so Kenton, give me your bad. Uh, well, there were so many things. I mean, there, there were so many, but I'll say our bad is falling into the habits that we've fallen into all season. I agree. Being who we have been most of the season. Outside of DJ Horn, we were one of eight from deep. Grace and I have talked about how much that shooting efficiency is important. Somebody else has to extend the defense out. Another slow start, which we've seen many times this season, and we end up having to say, oh, well, we lost their efforts. We're fighting back. They fought. They fought. They went down fighting. Well, damage it still went down. I'd like to see it go all the way up, Ricky, just once or twice. Yeah, my bad was the urgency and the defense, at least early, in this contest, I think you really gave Pitt way too many good looks out of the gate. I think some of that credit needs to go to Pitt as they were running fantastic offense yeah. in that first half yeah. and it really got them out and running. But State just looked a little lazy out of the gate. It just felt like the urgency wasn't there. And in these type of games, man, that there's no excuse for that. You can't ever afford that type of thing to happen. And you saw exactly where it bites you when it's all said and done. So for me, I'll keep that one brief. Uh, it's the urgency and some of the early defense. And now for the ugly to put a bow on this thing. Give me your ugly from this loss. And I, I want everybody to understand what I'm saying when I say this. We had way too many cardio folks in this game. Yeah. yeah. You know what that means? A cardio stat line means you didn't do anything. You didn't do anything positive. You didn't do anything negative. It just, you were out there, you know, but it's it's more of a flash mob wearing matching outfits type beat as opposed to a, I'm an actual basketball player. I came to play some actual basketball. It's it's very disappointing to see how many players barely did anything. It just, it wasn't there. It wasn't there. And there are multiple players that did not register more than four in any statistical category and play double digit minutes. Like, what are we doing here? What are we? That's, that's what I like to call a cardio stat line because at that point, you're not playing basketball. You're just running up and down the court and talking on occasion. My ugly, I'll keep this pretty simple. It's three things. It was rebounding, it was free throws, and it was overall energy. Rebounding, you lost by a wide margin, 37 to 28. We talked about the importance of either winning that rebounding battle or keeping it very close to where it right. doesn't hurt you. It hurt them in this game. You cannot afford to get rebounded by nine on your home court in a must-win game. That's inexcusable. Free throws. I mean, you lose a game by three points here, and you were six of 15 at the free throw line. That's a fundamental type of thing. That's that's just your daily want to. I, I really have never bought into many excuses that can be made for free throw shooting. Maybe sounds a little sour, but like D1 ACC basketball teams cannot afford to go six of 15 from the free throw line. W what else can you really say there? And then finally, the energy kind of tied into urgency, which I placed in the bad, but it just looked like Pitt wanted it more. They came out, started fast, punched you in the mouth. They even punched State in the mouth right after, after halftime into the second half as well. They just wanted it more, and they got it. And NC State is now sitting here with more, more questions and answers. You're going into a rough part of the schedule. And some folks are probably tuning into this for some Keats chatter, so I'll, I'll throw you a little bit of a bone here. If you want me to talk about Keats's tenure and maybe the doomsday clock uh, on his time here in Raleigh, 
I don't think this loss is where you're going to get any traction off of that. I think probably the next two on the road and then your last three to finish the season. Those five games in totality, that's where you're going to find out if he will or will not be here next season. If you if you tank in all five of those or you maybe go one and four, conversations are probably being had. Grayson, how many points did we lose this game, Rob? Three. Okay. How many free throws did we miss? That would be a whopping nine. So not only did we miss three, we missed three squared. Uh, I don't think <laughs> three, I don't think that three squared is crazy. <laughs> I, I, it's the truth though, right? Sure. Like that's the reality of what we did. We did not just miss three shots. This is not just a oh man, they did a hack of Ben Middlebrooks or they did a yeah. hack of DJ Burns. Michael O'Connell was missing free throws. Yeah. And again, this is not to call any specific player out because he wasn't even one of the guys that I would say were out there doing cardio because he actually did a little something. He actually fought and dove for some loose ball, did what he needed to do. It was some other folks, though, that, you know, again, those cardio stat lines, you got to do something, positively impact the game somehow. And then to have a cardio stat line with no defensive stats either, Mm. Yeah, the the dots of course can be connected there, so we'll we'll leave that as it is. But all in all, ugly loss. Couldn't afford to have this loss. Brutal time with the upcoming schedule. Blown opportunity. Really, no two ways about it. Like we said, potentially losing this game, it kind of undoes the the two wins you collected at home. It very much feels that way. And unless yep. you can go on the road multiple times and steal some games to finish out this month of February. I don't know, man. I, I don't know. Coming up next, on the other hand, we'll be looking at the women's basketball team who have a colossal matchup at home in the old barn against Virginia Tech on Thursday night. We're going to tell you what might need to happen to pull that one out after a quick word from our sponsors. Our first sponsor of the day is FanDuel. Happy Super Bowl week to all who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and then placing some super Super Bowl bets. If you jump on over to FanDuel, they have so many different ways for you to end the season, the football season as a whole actually, with a win or two, maybe three. Who knows how many wins you could take on Super Bowl Sunday over on FanDuel. But not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58 between the Chiefs and Niners, but FanDuel also has bets for anytime touchdown scores, over-unders for receptions, receiving yards, rushing yards, passing yards, you name it. They got it on FanDuel and so much more. New customers can join today and get $200 back in bonus bets if their first bet of $5 or more wins. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to make every moment more. FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Middle portion of our Thursday show, not, now talking about a brighter topic when it comes to NC State basketball, and that is the women's team. Coming off of the big win against Louisville on Monday night at home, they now roll into perhaps the biggest matchup so far in the season. They welcome in the 16th ranked Virginia Tech Hokies into Reynolds Coliseum on Thursday night. A rematch from when we narrowly lost a heartbreaker up in Blacksburg in early January. Of course, that game was without River Baldwin. Losing only 63-62 to 62 without your interior presence was quite a feat that you almost pulled off, if not for Georgia Amor getting away with assault <laughs> down there under the basket in the waning seconds of that one. <laughs> NC State actually out-rebounded Virginia Tech on the road without River Baldwin. That causes for a little bit of confidence coming into this one. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And the other thing is... Elizabeth Kitley is extremely talented. She, she is going unreal. to get hers. She's going to get hers, right? However, when you put a river ball in, you throw another body that, that you can get into the game at it. Let me let you in on a little secret in that game. Do you know who the tallest player for NC State was to, to rack up double-digit minutes in that game? Was? Mimi Collins, maybe? Mimi Collins. Yep. That was it. It was just her. She was the only player above six feet that racked up multiple uh, 
that or that went over double digits in terms of minutes in that game. That is all. That is it. Nobody else. Nobody else. So with that in mind, I think that this is uh, pretty simple. I think it's pretty straightforward. We got to. You will not stop Kitley outright, but you've got to contain her. You've got to contain her. Okay. In the words of the great Cat Williams, Elizabeth Kitley likes to party in the paint, and you got to tell her no. You got to. You got to make it hard on her. It's not about with players like her. It's not about stopping her outright. It's about turning her into a volume shooter to get her points. Last time she shot 24 uh, shots. She went 50% from the field. This time, make her shoot 30. Let's see how the rest of the team responds to those last six shots being taken away from them. In a ba women's basketball game, we know it's much slower pace. Like, we know it's, you know, it's a big deal. So I, I think River Baldwin is going to have to play a massive, massive uh, part in this thing. And of course, some of those other shots will more than likely go to either Georgia Amor or Kayla King. Obviously, threats from the perimeter. Amor is another one. You know, despite my snide remark just a couple minutes ago, she's a fantastic player. She is yeah. the reason for a lot of their success, in addition to Kitley. For NC State, this is another tall task. And, you know, going on the road and leading for the large portion of that game before going on unspeakable cold stretch, I think it was like seven minutes scoreless in that fourth quarter. You really felt like you had them on the ropes, and that would have been a fantastic win. But now you're looking for some get back, unfortunately. Now you have River Baldwin back in the lineup. You just put together probably your best half of basketball, that first half against Louisville on Monday night. NC State looked like they could play and beat anyone in the country. Isaiah James was lighting it up. Again, been on a tear lately. Sanaya Rivers has like we've mentioned, very funky stat lines sometimes, but the way she can influence a game is truly second to none. And so much of non -cardio the same- Non-cardio stat lines, that one. Non-cardio stat lines. <laughs> much of the same second time around facing the Hokies here, NC State's going to have to have superior guard play. And that's looking at Isaiah James. That's looking at Sanaya Rivers. That's looking at Maddie Hayes to get involved as well. If my memory serves correctly, she had a fantastic game on the road up there in Blacksburg. I think that when I look at this game, this is two legends in this thing, and they're they're walking in and saying, this town ain't big enough for the both of us. High noon, meet me outside the saloon, and we're going to decide who the best is. This game here will likely be the decider for the number one team in the conference, yeah. and not just in terms of, like, who gets first for this game or who gets first after this game. This most likely, in my opinion, will be the game that determines who goes on to get the one seed in the ACC tournament. And I think that NC State – is primed to, to like you said, get their get back, get their lick back, as the kids today would say. If it feels like the two best teams in the conference in this one, it's probably because it is. And not just because of standings, because if I haven't already said that, Virginia Tech is number one, NC State is tied for number two after they defeated Louisville on Monday night. It's a, it's a huge opportunity. And for all the NC State basketball, plural, fans that are looking for some kind of optimism, Get behind this women's team tonight in Reynolds because all the energy that is lacking in PNC needs to be funneled into Reynolds because they need this one. Postseason implications for the pack, and we need to be behind them 110%. Sellout after sellout after sellout, banger after banger after banger. It's like this the Wolfpack Nation, when it comes to supporting winning teams here, is like they're they're on a run that's akin to future in 2016. Like it's just Every time you look up, new drop, new greatness. That's what the Wolf, that's what Wolfpack Nation does. Continue showing up and being classless, being rowdy, being the the terrible, horrible, low down people you all are, according to um, certain crowds that I personally believe is just a soft program run by a bunch of soft people <laughs> with soft chins. That you know, I'm not talking about anyone in particular, nor nor would I need to address anyone, especially no one named William nor Courtney, uh, nor a wrestling coach whose name I can't even remember because I believe that it was like 33 to 6, which I didn't even know could happen in wrestling. But, you know, we're, we're, we're that's neither here nor there. Long story short, this game's for first place. Wolfpack Nation show up and act out like this is a game for first place. Soft program and William hit every single time, oh, don't they? Oh it's it's funny.
every single time. But it's, it's like a good steak from Sullivan's, like that perfect medium <laughs> steak. It doesn't matter. You're never going to miss. Rounding out our Thursday episode coming up next, we're talking about the unfortunate baseball news on Wednesday after a quick word from our sponsors. Our second sponsor of the day is Game Time. Game Time is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all of the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. And right now, if you're in the market for some big game tickets, all users on Game Time can get a hundred dollars off when they buy a big game ticket with code Vegas100. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game Time takes all of the guesswork out of buying tickets. You can see the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect upon arrival. Their all-in prices show your total up front, so you know you're getting a great deal before you check out, and you can buy tickets in just seconds with only a number of taps. Game Time has deals right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts, making it the place to find last-minute seats. Do not be mistaken. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. All Game Time users, like I mentioned, can get $100 off of a big game ticket with code VEGAS100. That's V-E-G-A-S-100. Terms apply, and just download the Game Time app and use code VEGAS100, V-E-G-A-S-100. Or, if you're not in the market for big game tickets, you can use code Locked On L O C K E D O N. That's Locked On for twenty dollars off of your first purchase on Game Time. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Last couple minutes here on Thursday. As I mentioned, some very unfortunate news coming out of Raleigh on Wednesday. Baseball related, of course. And right-handed pitcher Matt Willitson will likely miss the entire twenty twenty-four season with a right elbow injury. Some speculation kind of circled around on Twitter on Wednesday. I've actually had a couple days to chew on this. I was told of this a couple days prior, but certainly doesn't make it any easier to stomach. This is a massive loss for NC State baseball this season. You know, being a senior leader for this team, a senior workhorse in the pitching rotation, a guy that led you in both innings and strikeouts last year, getting wiped from the rotation this year. It's a tough loss, and there's been a lot of obvious preseason buzz about the the pitching depth coming into 2024. It's really about to get put to the test after this. In the words of the great Bruno Mars or Anderson Pack, whichever one you prefer in this song, not to be dramatic, but I want to die. No, I'm just joking. Seriously, <laughs> this is this is a tough blow. This is supposed to be a linchpin of that group. Like that's just that's the reality of what we're looking at here, and this isn't. You know, I often say this, when you lose really good players, you do not replace them one for one. Right. That's just not how it goes. The reality is, this is going to have to be a group effort to do good things. And also, let's go beyond the pitching. The defense has to be good. They, we we saw a lot of fielding errors last year that were very head scratching and, and, you know, got guys on base when they shouldn't. The defense complementing the pitching because, again, Matt Willison, we've seen the, the proof that he's a fantastic pitcher. All everything I've heard about him and surrounding him, phenomenal young man. Being a former athlete who's dealt with multiple season ending injuries myself, I know how tough that can be. Um, and so, you know, Matt Willison, you have all of our support. You have, you know, the, all the support of Wolfpack Nation. And I, I hope that, uh, you know, we keep him uplifted during this difficult time. And I hope that the team can find a way to kind of rally and do what needs to be done to kind of, again, not replace him but make the loss more evident than it would be otherwise certainly nothing but well wishes and speedy recovery thoughts to matt willitson it's a brutal loss and for you know the player the athlete himself that has to go through this like kenton mentioned it's tough this is no easy thing to be put through and so he will be sorely missed but as far as the team goes and moving forward with this you're going to need somebody to step up. And whether that might be Shane Van Dam, which is a transfer uh, into this program from SUNY Cortland, heard very good things about Van Dam through the fall. Apparently he's sitting mid-90s, which coming from a, a transfer of SUNY Cortland's a little bit head-scratching. But hey, if you're throwing mid-90s, we're going to find a spot for you. And that spot might just be in the middle of the weekend rotation. But yeah, I mean, just just rewinding and talking about this young depth for the pitching staff this year. There's been a lot of positive buzz that it could be the deepest pitching staff that we've seen here 
at NC State in quite some time. Perfect opportunity to now prove that. I think you have some younger guys. We've mentioned Chance Mako on this program before, just a fresh. He could see significant innings. Uh, Jacob Dudon's another one, probably more of a bullpen guy, but he could see some time. Can't replace a Matt Willardson one-to-one. The, the amount of experience he has, whoever ends up coming in to fill his spot, nobody has that type of experience. So it's a brutal loss. I don't think it derails your season like I've mentioned here already, but it is certainly a tough loss, and especially so close to the season. The time you're listening to this, we are now eight days away from kicking this thing off. So NC State Baseball is going to have to find a way to pick up the pieces here and really get this thing rolling. Thank you all so much for the support. Thank you all for tuning in. Be sure to hit that like button. Drop your comments in the comment box. I'm sure there's going to be plenty to say about this disappointing loss to Pittsburgh at home on Wednesday evening. Tell us what you think about that. Tell us what you think about the women's prospects and taking on Virginia Tech and Reynolds on Thursday evening, and then let us know what you think about the loss of Matt Willardson for the 2024 season for NC State Baseball. As always, if you have not already, mash that subscribe button on your way out the door. Maybe tell a friend who's never heard of this program that they might like it. And if they do like it, they should hit that subscribe button as well. We will see you all tomorrow. Until then, go back. Go back.